If you're interested in learning about how to film live concerts and how to approach this perhaps as a solo shooter, then this is the video for you. Because in this video, I'm going to run through my process for filming multi-camera live concerts and do so by going through some behind the scenes footage of myself setting up for one of these particular gigs and all of the different video and audio related decisions and choices that I end up making. This video is the first of a series I'm dubbing the gig log on this channel where I'm going to run through actual gigs that I take on both on the video and photo side and discuss all the different gear settings and different decisions that I make while mixing in some actual footage from the event and some behind the scenes footage as well. And also bear in mind because this is the first version of the series I'm still experimenting with different things so apologies in advance for any sort of blurry or lower quality behind the scenes footage. This was a very dark dimly lit room and the camera was on not the best settings for this so we're learning as we go. So needless to say I've been filming these live sort of teen rock school concerts for the better part of a year and a half now. These are generally events where you have a number of different bands assembled of around eight to ten different students each performing an hour to an hour and a half set of music at a local bar or club or concert venue on a stage usually in front of a given audience of parents, friends, family, so on. Usually from each of these gigs my deliverables are actually recording the entire set of each band and making that available to the different students and their parents. Well at the same time for the music school that runs these events they will often sometimes make small commercial spots for social media out of different clips from the show. So really to do this we are filming a multi-camera live concert while also capturing audio throughout this process and using it to mix all these things into a final concert video and post. So I'm going to walk you through how I set these gigs up and what it actually looks like to do one of these concerts as a solo shooter. Let's get into it. So for these gigs, I'm usually utilizing a three camera setup and two of these cameras are going to be static shots on tripods that are going to be very close to the stage. And I tend to quote unquote hug the stage in this case because really I want to make sure that these static angles are safe shots that have the least or minimal chance of having anyone walk in front of them and interfere with the shot or block the shot in any way. And also number two, because I'm trying to capture redundant audio throughout this, I want to ensure that each of these camera angles and any audio positioned in or around them will be usable as well. So in this case, usually what I'm going to do is just scope out the room and try to position what is my first static angle, which tends to be sort of right center of the stage. This is usually, I would say, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 feet back, if not further. But in this case, maybe it was more like 5 to 10, given the tables and other things in close proximity to it. Now, usually this shot, I would say, is a wide medium, somewhere in the neighborhood of around 35 millimeters, but because of how much closer these cameras were to the stage, I ended up running a bit more of a wide shot in general for this particular one. For this camera, I ended up using my Sony a7 III and the Sony 1635 f2.8 G Master lens, pretty much running at 16 millimeters as you see me building this setup. So once I start building this camera setup, I'm usually placing this so that I know this is going to be one of the primary angles I'm going to constantly go back to. But mainly this is going to be a shot that focuses on all of the different band members of the stage and provides a sort of general view of the entirety of the performance. And this is going to be true of the other static angle as well. So as I'm building this camera setup, I'm also thinking about just generally what I want to achieve with the audio for this particular angle. Now there's a lot of ways you could approach audio throughout these gigs, but I'm going to usually use a mixture of both Zoom H6 recorders, which you're going to see me set up in a bit, and also Rode VideoMic NTG shotgun microphones. What I'm going to do for each of my camera angles is trying to get usable audio for each of these cameras while setting them up as well. So mainly each camera and where it's positioned also contains a usable source of audio that I could hopefully refer back to or might even become the primary source of audio depending on a few different factors. So back to this shot, once of course I'm building this camera, I'm going to position it on the tripod and try to line up my shot. In this case, again, trying to focus on the fact that can I see every person that I need to on stage. But what I'm trying to do is with these wide safe shot angles is basically ensure that if in one case, maybe the drummer or a certain band member is blocked by something that that other complementary shot is going to show that same person. Mainly, in an ideal sense, both of these safe angles include everyone. And what you'll see later is I'm going to have a third angle that will allow for a lot more dynamic, sort of medium, tighter shots that will provide a lot more intrigue compared to maybe these angles. Now, once I set the cameras up, I'm also going to place what are boa bags on each of these tripods. These are effectively sort of lead shot based sandbags, which I use mostly for the fact that these tripods tend to have a fair amount of shake and rumble in any loud environment. And not just this tripod model in particular, but frankly, I would say anyone. So if this is something you haven't thought through, definitely consider trying to weigh down your tripods for these gigs. At this point, what I'm going to start to do is sort of scope out the remainder of the room just to see what I can do in terms of maybe an additional shot or an additional angle, or just see what spots might look and feel the best in terms of utilizing my handheld angle, which is going to be my third shot later, just to see what works best in the room and maybe what given lens choices and focal lengths are going to best complement the size of the room where I'm going to be positioning myself 
throughout the show and where I might end up depending on what songs are at play, how interactive the crowd is, and so on. So now that I've set up the first angle, I'm going to set up the second angle. And this angle, again, is going to be a safe static shot that also sits on a tripod. This is going to be more towards the center or even center left of the stage. Now where the first shot I set up tends to be more on a 30 to 45 degree angle, this one I would say is intended to be a lot more dead on center or maybe only ever so slightly off center. This is sort of the classic staring right at the front of the stage shot and is really just intended to get sort of a line of sight view of the stage kind of at its most basic form. Now for this shot in this particular gig I utilize my Sony a7S 3 and the 20 millimeter f1.8 G lens. Again we're going to stick with very wide lenses for this just because these cameras were around 5 to 10 feet from the stage but I would also say that in terms of how I ended up kind of cropping this image later in post in this case this shot probably ended up being a little bit closer to around 28 millimeters maybe from the 20. So bear in mind we have our first angle that was more towards the end of 16 millimeters with the 16 to 35 on there and this one at around 28 millimeters. I usually find the difference between these shots are again around 10 to 15 millimeters. So usually to try to show some difference in field of view between these two cameras even though frankly they're often going to be positioned roughly around the same spot even if on a slightly different angle looking at the stage. Now what audio source you choose to use in and around which camera is going to be of course your own choice but I tend to like to have at least one good shotgun microphone that I'm going to know will give me usable audio from the show. Now one thing you're going to really want to keep in mind of course is because these concerts are very loud you're going to want to be really really conscious of your levels particularly with any audio you're running through your camera. I keep the preamps very very low on these Sony's maybe around the 5 volume mark or frankly even lower in some cases depending and then I'm going to use the gain knob on the Rode VideoMic NTG which allows you to control this more easily in real time and sort of adjust lower raise if I need to during the show. Now the other thing I'm going to utilize with these Rode VideoMic NTGs is the fact that they do have a minus 20 dB cut or pad that you can employ and this is usually going to be very helpful because again not only are these cameras close to the stage but frankly even if they weren't the room is going to get very loud once the band and the different instruments start playing. So as you can see here I'm starting to position that second center or center left angle. I'll actually end up moving this a bit later as you'll see but I'm mainly trying to just get a decent amount of difference and sort of check the difference in shots between these two and make sure that they offer enough of a variety between them so that you're not essentially cutting two of the nearly same shot together when you're trying to do this in post later. Now once I position the cameras I am sort of roughly doing some at least basic settings right I'm trying to get the exposure around where I want it to be or where I think it would be even if not all of the lights on that are going to be on while the band is performing. I'm usually ensuring that I'm starting to white balance these cameras and check that to make sure they're consistent across them. I'm also going to use manual focus on each of these cameras just because I want to again ensure that these are really solid and safe and that no one coming too forward on the stage or no one going too far back or any other type of odd situation would throw off focus for the shot because we want it to be really solid. Now again these shots are going to be closer to the stage in general but I'm usually running them somewhere in the range of anywhere from f4 to f5 6 to f6 3 again trying to get a good chunk of nearly all of the members and their instruments in focus on the stage. We're going to use sort of a more shallow depth of field effect with that third camera angle later but mainly we want to ensure that again everything is visible on the stage and everything is in focus. And of course much like the other one we're going to place a boa bag on this tripod as well to make sure it's secure. Now at this point what I'm going to start to do is set up my actual zoom h6 recorders and this is where we're going to have a couple of different options for doing this. The first zoom h6 I'm going to set up is actually going to be positioned on that first right center camera angle that we talked about. Now I use sort of a Boya shock mount which I'll leave a link to in the description below. I've had a few people ask me about this in my previous concert tips video which I will also link to above here because a lot of this information I'm talking about you're going to see explained in even more detail and across different situations in that video as well so I'd highly recommend checking that out if you're curious to learn a bit more about concert videography. Now what I'm going to do for this particular Zoom H6 is basically utilize its XY microphones and use the benefit of how the camera is positioned in proximity both to the stage and the actual live amplifiers and instruments and the speakers and subwoofers that are nearby to sort of have a good balanced sound here. And of course the XY microphones are going to allow for this because they are able to pick this up pretty clearly and again unobstructed and unencumbered by any different sort of crowd noise or other types of wait staff making noise that you might find in a bar or club. So this is going to be again one of the best positioned audio sources I can usually get. In fact I would say the vast majority of the time it is this Zoom H6 with the XY mics positioned on this particular camera that is going to be my main source of audio I'm often cutting back to. Now one of the things people most often forget about the Zoom H6 and other recorders that have the XY mic capsules like the H4n is the fact that they do have two 
different settings you can utilize to capture audio with the XY microphones, specifically being the capture or pickup pattern in terms of the degrees of the XY mics. So the Zoom H6 has either a 90 or 120 degree audio pickup pattern that you can utilize to capture sound in the room or environment you're in. Now, I would say in most cases, I'm actually utilizing a 90 degree angle because in this case, I usually wanna minimize any noise from the sides or the rear of where the mics are positioned. But again, because these cameras were placed, I would say within five to 10 feet of the stage and the main speakers and subwoofers outputting the sound to the room, I wanted to capture it on a bit wider angle to make sure that I did capture more audio from both the left and right side of what might be traditionally outside of the 90 degree bounds of these mics. So in this case, you'll see me utilize a 120 degree pattern. It's something most people forget in terms of these zoom recorders, but I would highly say definitely pay attention to this during your sound checks and make sure you're choosing the right degrees for your XY mic capsule when you're capturing audio that way. Now, what I will often do is take my different Pelican cases that have sort of my camera gear and my audio gear and usually position each of one of these right under the tripods holding these angles. Number one, assuming I'm in a good safe venue where I know I can do this and there's not going to be a huge standing crowd or mosh pit around me. I know I can easily grab gear as I need to and it's very accessible to me throughout the show. But also because some of these cameras are positioned a bit higher and I want to be able to ensure that I can get a good leverage to maybe see that zoom recorder on top of the Sony a7 III I positioned it on and check the different settings and the screen there. And just so I can also better monitor some of the different camera views and settings if I need to. Now you'll see I'm going to take off the arms from the tripods here, mostly because I'm not going to be doing any panning or tilting. And I find these are going to more so get in the way of just myself walking around the stage and or potentially anyone else that's going to be in the area. So they're not needed. Now I'm going to start to set up the second Zoom H6 recorder in this case. And this is going to be used to get what is typically either a board feed or a speaker feed. So whatever's going to be output in terms of the room here by the main sound engineer, that is what I'm going to attempt to capture with at least one of these external recorders. The tough part about capturing this audio is that usually, though folks tend to think it is the cleanest and the best source, it tends to be among the more imbalanced ones. Unless you have an audio engineer running an entirely separate bus for you that's going to have this a bit better mix. And usually these sources might be a bit more vocal heavy or would have louder gain on anything that doesn't have actual amplification or that isn't a louder acoustic instrument like drums that are on stage. Pros and cons, I've definitely used this source before. And the goal here is much like with the shotgun mic on the left or left of center camera. And much like with the Zoom H6 on the center right of camera, we're trying to just get additional sources of audio. So hopefully, even if you don't necessarily need this or it's not the best one, it is another option you have in your back pocket to utilize. Now, once I've set up that Zoom H6, again, we're not even really worried about checking audio necessarily yet. We're mostly just trying to get things in place and ready to go. Now I'm going to start building my third camera angle. And in this case, I utilize my Sony a7 IV for this show. That's actually for a couple of reasons. Number one, unlike my Sony a7 III, which is a phenomenal camera, the a7 IV will allow me in 4K to run it in its APS-C crop mode. So this means depending on the room and the lens choice I'm using, I'm going to be able to get a 1.5 times crop if I think this actually warrants it and will help in terms of getting the shots I need. Now for this camera in this case, I ended up using the 24 to 70 f 2.8 G Master version two lens. But as I noted earlier, what I actually did in this case was run the lens in APS-C crop mode in 4K throughout the show. So this 24 to 70 ended up really becoming a 36 to 105 millimeter, which I find provided me a bit better range in terms of some of the shots I wanted to get. Now, again, I have run prime lenses with this angle before. Something like a 50 millimeter can work great with this sort of handheld angle if you're shooting in a similar sized venue or a situation. But I really do find the zoom lenses give me a lot more variety and allow me to do nice shot sequencing and allowing me to get wide, medium, and tight shots just from a single spot. Though, of course, we're going to be moving all around the stage throughout the show. Now, you can see I'm also setting up a Rode VideoMic NTG on this camera angle. This is arguably going to be the least useful audio angle because I'll be moving around constantly but again, it is yet another option I have, and it should be able to also capture what I would consider decent audio, at least in certain spots and positions, depending on if and what I might need. Again, also making sure that I'm setting gain pretty low in the camera for this as well, and also making sure I'm using the minus 20 dB pad on this microphone too. And once I've set, again, some of the basic exposure and settings that I've been setting up on the other cameras, and I do this for the third angle, what I'm going to do at that point is start to basically ensure each of the settings are more closely aligned to each other across across the cameras. One thing I didn't mention is the fact that for this third angle, I'm usually running this in the more shallow depth of field side. So for the 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens, I will run this at f 2.8 throughout the show. If I had something a lot more shallow on it, I would say I might run it at around maybe f 1.8. A bit more shallow than that gets a bit tough because I am often trying to get more than just one person or one subject and their instrument in the shot. And so when you're trying to get two or three folks and you're sort of on an angled plane, that gets difficult with the 
super shallow depth of field. So I do want a shallow depth of field effect. I just don't maybe want the most shallow I can get, at least unless I'm getting a good amount of distance on it. But again, bear in mind, I'm trying to keep exposure, not just on these static cameras, but yes, even this handheld sort of roaming angle to be pretty consistent and something that I don't have to change much or even at all throughout shooting the concert. In an ideal sense, I can go from the front of the stage to the sides of the stage, the different parts of the room and not have to really dramatically adjust exposure. Maybe a bump or two in ISO, but nothing too dramatic. If I have to drastically shift my exposure with this camera every time I move around, that's going to limit the types of shots I can get, and that's going to actually make this angle a lot less useful. And because I go handheld with this angle, I'm going to use the steady shot active setting in these Sonys, because again, it's going to provide the most stable shot I can. And that means, of course, I would never want to use something like my a7 III for this, which doesn't have that. So that makes the a7 S3 or the a7 IV a more ideal camera for handheld use. At the same time, you might ask why not use a gimbal or why not use a maybe heavier setup for the handheld one with the monitor. Again, I'm usually going to be carrying these cameras for hours upon hours during these shoots. So easily, if you have three bands, each doing an hour, hour and a half set, I have a camera in my hands for four to six hours, apart from all the other different things I'm worrying about. So a smaller and lighter rig is going to be of benefit for me, my back, and just kind of getting around the venue as I need to. Also mentioning the fact that you might have different people and other things that might make it a bit more crowded. So being able to sort of navigate more discreetly is going to be helpful. And what I'm going to start to do with this handheld angle, sort of like I did earlier on in terms of scoping out different shots in the room, is I'm going to take the camera and now start experimenting with different shots and fields of view to see just what types of different shots I can get with the lens choice I made, see what might be some good angles that'll be conducive to different types of shots. You might see here, this is sort of a corner pocket for the keyboards, right? This could lend itself to maybe some nice reveal shots with the column that's there as I sort of start to experiment with that. I also find some good angles that I can get here of the drums and percussion setup, while also sort of being mindful of the mirror on the back wall. You'll see here, I'm sort of checking out other different perspectives of the stage that I can get, maybe from a bit further back. Also just trying to see what I can get from different parts of the room here. I would say if you have the ability to try to work the room to get different shots, this is something I will try to do if and where it's possible. If you're in a mixed environment, like a bar or restaurant where the whole thing is open to regular customers, that might get a bit more weird and difficult. But again, because this is a private room in this particular venue has made it a lot easier to know that I can get my way around and not necessarily get in anyone's way if and as I'm doing this. Now I'm also going to start to kind of explore between the different tables here and start to see what might lend itself to some good shots from different perspectives here as well. Again this isn't super scientific here but this was the point that made me decide to run this camera in crop mode so I could just end up getting some better shots at the more telephoto end versus say if I only kept it in its regular full frame mode. And had I not done a bit of scoping out prior to using that camera angle I might not have made that choice. So that's why usually if I have a spare minute or two, I'm trying to scope things out once I get there. In this case, you can start to see the sort of difference or proximity between the two cameras as it stands now. Again, I did move them back a bit later, but you can see sort of where I'm placing these cameras with respect to the stage and the room. Now, once sound check starts taking place as it is now, this is where I'm going back and forth between all the different audio sources and making sure things are at least up to where I think they should be. With the zoom recorders, for the one using the XY mics, I'm usually making sure I'm running the minus 12 backup track setting. And of course, for the one that is actually tapping off of, in this case, the speaker, but whether that's from a speaker or board feed, I'm also making sure that the minus 20 dB pad is set for that as well, again, to provide more headroom and safety. I feel like a lot of times people with external recorders, if you're working with something that's not 32-bit float, where you have sort of an unlimited ceiling and floor to sound, oftentimes run this a bit too close to where the clipping point is or zero dB. I would try to ultimately monitor audio so it's somewhere within the minus 18 to minus 12 decibel range. Give yourself a fair amount of headroom. It's relatively trivial to add some gain in post, but if you run that too tight and if you have clipping audio, it's going to be more difficult to try to recover that than it is to just boost your levels a little bit. As you can see here, I'm going around with different headphones and just monitoring audio. These are my Sennheiser HD280 headphones. I'm just using to kind of quickly check the different audio sources to make sure things are level as sound check is occurring. I will check this periodically throughout the show as it starts to happen, but again, I want to make sure that at least as far as sound check goes, things are where they need to be. Now, what you're seeing here, of course, is as I mentioned, I moved this left or left of center camera more towards the center of the stage right before the show started taking place. And this was because I ultimately decided I wanted to have these cameras a bit closer together so they'd be easier to sort of monitor and control if I needed to. But it would also open up a bit of a pathway towards that other side of the stage, which would allow me to get around a bit easier. One thing I'm still really conscious of, though, is between these two cameras, I want to allow for a pocket between them that I can take that handheld angle and shoot through without having any of these tripods or those setups get in the way. So as you can see, mostly while the show is taking place, I 
am running this handheld angle. My two static shots are pretty much doing their thing without me doing anything, and all of my different audio sources are also kind of running as well. Again, you can see I'm sort of occasionally, periodically checking on them as I need to, but by and large, for the most part, my focus is running this handheld sort of dynamic shot here to try to get different looks of the stage and of the room. Now, the interesting thing here with this shot is I would say this shot is really the sauce of the show. Yes, those safe shot angles are going to be what a lot of people will want to see because they want to see the whole stage, they want to see the band, but what really sort of sets this apart from any sort of standard kind of parent recording a concert, aside from the better quality audio, which we're going to utilize heavily, is the fact that this handheld angle and the shots we're getting with this is going to look much better than certainly anything anyone's capturing on a cell phone. It's going to look a lot more dynamic with some of the handheld movements and motion and different unique shot ideas that I'm getting with it. So again, we're going to utilize a lot of different focal length and variety type of shots as I'm going around the stage, and that is pretty much my approach for a lot of this. Start at one end of the stage and start to work my way around. With this handheld angle, I'm trying to get sort of individuals, ones and twos of different people. If I can, of course, I'm trying to focus more so on the key people, so whoever that lead vocalist is for the song. If there's something like a guitar solo going on, that's something I'm going to want to make sure I'm trying to capture, at least with this angle as well. It doesn't matter if I get to it a bit late or if I don't get the whole thing with it, but I just want to make sure I'm spotlighting and soloing people to a decent amount and not favoring one person too much or kind of unreasonably over the others. Now in this case, again, as the show and kind of as this song got a little more dynamic, you have a little clapping section, I want to capture the stage again a bit from afar and back in the room to get some of the crowd in it. This is again one of the reasons I scoped out the room in advance so I have a decent idea of what might look good and where I might be able to easily get to and move to and back from in terms of getting back up to the front of the stage. Yes, you can see in some cases you might as well just get some shots from a table, take a seat with people, shoot through their heads, get a little bit creative here. You have the liberty to do that. People should know why you're there. So definitely take advantage of some of these shot situations. Again, this is a more tame concert for sort of teen rock schools and the parents here. It's not a really active hyper crowd. That might look entirely different depending on what type of show you're doing, but I would leverage the actual environment as much as you can to get unique shots. The room oftentimes provides a lot more than you think it does, so make use of it as best as you can. So again, let's just show a quick run through of what this all looks like in one go. You have that first angle we talked about, which in this case is the wide shot on the Sony a7 III running at 16 millimeters. We have sort of that second wide medium shot running on my Sony a7S III that is more center stage, that is using the 20 millimeter f1.8 G lens. And we have our more dynamic handheld shot, which in this case is the Sony a7 IV running the 24 to 70 f2.8 G master version 2 in APS-C crop mode. So this is more so a 36 to 105 millimeter in terms of its field of view. From each of these three angles, my goal is to take them and then in post and whatever editor you use, I use Final Cut Pro, basically set up a multi-cam sequence and cut between them anywhere from every three, five, seven seconds or so just to make a dynamic sort of show. Audio sources, I'm certainly not toggling during the middle of a song in terms of post and how I would set that up, but I might switch my different audio sources from song to song depending on what I think sounds best or if there was an issue with one audio source that there wasn't with another once I find this later. Now, of course, you probably might want to hear what one of these concerts sounds like apart from even just the visuals that I've been showing here. And for that, I would normally try to put that in this video, but of course, YouTube copyright claims nearly anything that is even just a cover song that has no part of the original song whatsoever. So I'm going to link to above and then the description below one of the songs from this concert show. So you'll get to see a good run through of what all these angles and the multi-camera sequence and the audio captured looks and sounds like. My goal here in talking through all this is not to maybe overwhelm you or show how much this actually takes to do, but to show that you certainly can do a multi-camera concert shoot and do this by yourself if you have the right amount of planning and preparation and you get a good feel for what is the best approach that works for you and the different sorts of venues and bands and concerts that you're generally recording. I've tuned these processes over time for these rock school shows and the venues they typically choose. And I would say that as a solo shooter, you could likely take some form of a similar approach to trying to do this yourself. The possibilities are really endless with these gigs, but you can certainly accomplish a lot, even just as a single person and even on a tighter budget, depending on what you're looking to do. So with that said, that is my process for shooting these live concerts as a solo shooter. Now, hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. As I noted before, definitely check out my five concert videography tips video that I will leave a link to above and in the description below because this includes a lot more information on many of these points that I talked about here in this video. Also, let me know what you'd like to see in future gig log episodes because I think we'll be able to cover a lot more interesting things coming up in the near future. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.